Okay, so a, a question that's come in from uh, from John. Um, what happens if the condensing unit has a larger capacity than the evaporator and vice versa? That's a good topic, actually. Let me just um, put some put another slide up a second. Um, basically, one of the webinars that we did was the selection match between condensing unit and evaporator. And one of the topics that I get asked a lot when I'm on site is what defines the evaporating temperature of a system? Is it the uh, is it the the evaporator and the condensing unit? Is it my suction pressure? How, how does it, it it define itself? And basically, when we start looking at sort of system match, and I'll just put um, this little picture up a second, and then we'll go on to to look at some more. So let me just swap the screens around a second. Okay, so let's put that up on the screen. Well, that should be coming up on the screen. So if, if we think of a nice, simple cold room uh, uh, yeah, refrigeration system, so we've got our condenser unit, our cooler, and the match between those two, so I don't know, let's say that's 10 kilowatt and that's 10 kilowatt, um, that's, that's matched. And at that match, we'll have a particular uh, temperature difference and that will give us, as we've said before, our humidity on our cold room. So we've got our humidity levels there, and we've got our design TD, our temperature difference between evaporating and air onto the cooler at a Pacific uh, delta T. And then if we uh, just come down, I'll just come down to uh, some other slides. So if we if we have a if we have a condensing unit that is larger than the evaporator, and I'll just come back to sort of answering the main question. I'll just put the webcam back on and we'll get back onto the, the board a minute. So if we've got our uh, condensing unit and we'll, we'll do it this way, we'll look at a compressor. So if we've got our, our compressor and then we've got our evaporator, uh, let's do the condenser expansion device, our evaporator. If that is, let's say, 10 kilowatt, and that's 10 kilowatt, evaporating at zero, evaporating at zero, that is equally matched. So the capacity of that and the capacity that we can extract from our room is the same. So that system is nicely matched. If, however, we have, let's say, keep 10 kilowatt evaporator, and let's say we have an eight kilowatt compressor. That compressor is smaller in capacity than the evaporator. So what will happen is that because that is a larger, our suction pressure coming back to our machine will rise. Might not rise by much, might, might rise by uh, uh, a few PSI, which in effect is good because it's giving our compressor something to work at. If we then uh, change things around a little bit and we say, okay, we've got a 12 kilowatt compressor, that now can do more duty than our evaporator can actually provide. So our suction pressure is gonna fall a little bit. Um, and you can work this out on balance graphs, balance tables, uh, most of it's done nowadays, to be fair, on uh, selection software for the evaporators. But in in essence, um, yeah, if you've got a larger compressor than the evaporator, your suction pressure will fall a little bit. If you have a compressor that's larger than the evaporator, suction pressure will rise a little bit. Generally, this is my own personal feeling. I would much rather have, um, let's say, a evaporator that is slightly larger than the, uh, let's say, the, the compressor, the condensed unit part, because our suction pressure will rise, which is good for energy saving. It's also good because we have a higher relative humidity on our cooler because we're not extracting so much moisture out of the room itself. So I hope that answers that one, John.